Yeah, the eye of the needle, let's see, it's a very short study, so we'll take a look at, I want to try and focus on the verse, where is it? All right, hold on one second. <clears throat> My computer is running a bit slow, so bear with me. We're going to look at Mark chapter 10, verse 25. And we'll look first at the camel. As soon as my computer gives me a... Uh... Alright, hold on one second. Alright, I think I have a plug-in. That happens from time to time. There's a plug-in running in the background. And that slows everything down. So I have to disable some, some uh, programs. Yours too? Yeah. Alright, well let's see what happens. <clears throat> Mark chapter... Let me post the first heading. We look at the camel. And there I think... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is looking at the church, the body of Christ. Um, and a camel is an, is an unclean animal. So it would have to be the church prior to the revelation revelation of Christ and so we see here in Mark chapter 10 verse 25 it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God well that's a curious statement isn't it and then we read uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 14 we'll look at the camel individually the, the, the eye and also the needle and then Lord willing try to bring them together in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 7 we read about some unclean animals nevertheless these shall you not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel there it is the hare the coney for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof they are unclean unto you so the camel, you know, God uses a variety of different uh, names of animals to typify who? To typify the, the body, right? The church again. Uh, like the ass, the camel, the hare, and so on. Yeah, it's describing us. And I, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 15, verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all of all that they have, spare them not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So can you see how the, the camel here is a type of the body of Christ? And in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 15, And so shall be the plague of the horse, the mule, the camel. You're familiar with this verse, right? Oh, Rachel sat... What verse is that, Eric? Where, do you have that verse handy? Maybe you can post it later. In Zechariah 14, 15, So shall the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, the ass, and all the beasts, see the beast again, that shall be in these tents as this plague. Okay. Matthew chapter 3, verse 4, Oops, hold on one second. Uh, bear with me one second. Yeah, Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. So there again, I think God is uh, identifying the, the body of Christ more specifically prior to salvation. And that's why I think we end up reading about the camel going through the eye of a needle, which is, I believe, the language of salvation. Uh, Matthew 23 verse 24 ye blind guys would strain at a knot and swallow a camel looking at the Pharisees the Sadducees I think in this context and they swallow a camel and notice in Proverbs 1 verses 11 and 12 let us lay wait for blood let us look privily for the innocent without cause let us swallow them up alive. 
So there's another picture I think we uh, we get looking at how the the unsaved body that is Babylon comes against the elect, the body of Christ. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Looking at the camel, uh, and I think you would agree that the camel here is a is an unclean animal, and it typifies the the church more specifically in tribulation and that's when the we God now begins to talk about the redemption of the body okay what about the eye let me see if I can offer a few verses here I think the eye is pointing to Christ for the body of Christ the light of the body Again, Mark chapter 10, verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of, of God. Who's the rich man? What do you suppose is in view with the rich man? We've talked about this a number of times. There again, I think we're looking at Babylon. Babylon is the rich man, right? Oops, hold on one second. Uh, Luke chapter 11 and verse 34. Yeah, it is Babel. So in verse 34, Luke chapter 11. The light of the body is the eye. You see how God defines the terms? And that's why it's important, Lord willing, that we study the Bible carefully. Uh, no matter how apparent something might appear on the surface you know sometimes <laughs> we see things in the Bible and they, they're, they're so plain that we somehow we formulate a con conclusion just by reading it that's happened to you right I'm sure um, and that's where the danger is because even though what might be uh, you know obvious on the surface it's possible that God could be talking about something totally different. And one example I can think of uh, is the verse that I, I know I've looked at for years, uh, for some time, where it speaks of, let's see, about the healing of the beast. How does that verse go again? Do you remember that verse? Uh, yeah, I forget the, uh, the exact reference. But it has to do with healing. And then, oh yeah, I think it had to do with Satan. Uh, the beast uh, that was bound. And then later on, uh, you know, the, uh, the dragon or the beast. And we read about the healing of the beast. And then we're thinking somehow, no, wait a minute. No, I got to find that verse. All right, you know what? Let me, um, let me think. It'll probably come to me in a few. And if it does, I'll, I'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Eric. Yeah, the deadly wound was healed. Exactly. Um, and then how many times <clears throat> we read that verse and then we think about uh, a time when Satan is loose. Well, how does the Bible define? You see, that's our minds came to that conclusion. My mind, when I read that. Uh, let me see if I can find the, the rest of the verse. I'm kind of like uh, going away from the topic, but just to try to make a point. Deadly wound. And the deadly wound was healed. And then we, we look at that and we say, okay, well, then that has to do with the, uh, the end of the church age in 1988. Uh, and then now Satan is alive again and coming in the... Um, coming against the body of Christ. Well, again, that's because on the surface it appears to be saying that because we tie that in to a few other verses and we come to that conclusion. But if we search the Bible, God defines the word heal and pretty much always, as far as I can tell, it is uh, the language of salvation. So the, the deadly wound being healed, that being healed, I think has to do with the, uh, the redemption of the body the elect coming out of tribulation okay uh, hang on one second
All right, so we're looking at the eye of a needle. John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Christ is the light. And we read in Luke 11, verse 34, that the light of the body is the eye. Well, if the light is the eye, well, then who is the eye? The eye and the light is Christ. Then the eye also has to be Christ, correct? The light of the body is the eye. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23. But if thine eye offend thee. Now, what do you suppose is in view there? If thine eye offend thee. Who offends in, in judgment? And I, I offered some verses on the word offend. It has to do with going after a different God, right? Right, exactly, Eric. Your Christ or Antichrist. Uh, if thine eye offend thee, well, the eye is Christ. The light of the eye, the light of the body is the eye. So if thine eye, that is, if, if the church, if the body, if your body, which is the temple of God, offends, then it needs to be removed. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And that's what's in view here, I believe. We read again in uh, Matthew 18, verse 9. Uh, Eric posted Genesis 31, 34. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And I know you're looking at the uh, this topic about Rachel and the images. So that might be uh, another clue, Lord willing, the fact that uh, she put them in the camel's furniture. That might be relating to Babylon, and the idea that she sat on them, again, might be... And right now, it's kind of hard to tell without more information. Yeah, you know, we've been told that the sitting is ruling, and I, I'm not doubting it. It's just that I think, uh, Lord willing, we want to search the Bible to find sufficient uh, information to support that, especially in the context, you know. So, yeah, the uh, so then the I is pointing to the body of Christ. If I now offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. We know that in judgment there is a separation. Uh, it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell. So if the body is whole, and that's why in, in other verses God speaks of the lame, uh, the maim, those that are missing a part of the body, and that's how they come into life. They come into the kingdom of God because now they are separated there's a separation in the body okay uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 7 and this verse i think lord willing is starting to make a little more sense behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him you see how it's not talking about every single human being first of all we know god is speaking in parables every eye i think it is the body of christ why because christ is revealed in the scriptures in the Bible uh, the unsaved the wicked well they too they see Christ but they're not seeing him unto salvation it is the fact that Christ has been revealed hey Michael welcome uh, just maybe a little bit close to halfway into the study I'm offering some verses on the eye of a needle and I offer that the camel first of all was uh, a type of the the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. Now we're looking at the the eye. And we read in, what is it? Yeah, John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And then Luke chapter 11, verse 34, the light of the body is the eye. So the eye, again, I think is pointing to Christ. It is pointing to Christ, who is the light of the body. Okay, so behold, he cometh with clouds, Revelation 1, verse 7. Every eye shall see him. The body of Christ is the eye. Isn't that interesting? And they also which pierced him. Now, more specifically, the, the believers, they pierced Christ. I'm not going to get uh, into details here, but uh, on the cross, uh, then, well, we read somewhere in the Old Testament, then shall they look on me whom they have pierced. 
So in a sense, the believers, they put Christ to death. So every eye shall see him. So it's interesting how, you know, in the past we look at these verses and they're very dramatic, aren't they? Very dramatic. And that's what I was saying earlier, is that when we read them, it's almost guaranteed that at first glance we are going to get a picture. And that picture usually stays with us unless, by God's grace, we, we do realize that God defines the terms and that he is speaking in parables. Matthew 26, verse 64. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. And I think the, uh, in the context, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in the context, the uh, the fact that he sees the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, uh, he is typifying the uh, the church, right? Maybe someone can post the the person in view. This conversation taking place with Christ. I forget the uh, the individual in view here, but nonetheless, I think in the context it is. I'm not sure. Was it Caiaphas? It's one of them, right? In the context, it is speaking of seeing the Son of Man on the right hand of power. And every eye shall see him. So the Christ is seeing, not literally, but in the scriptures. Eric posted Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Amen, Eric. That's an excellent verse. Thanks for sharing that. Um, let me write it down because I need to... I'll see if I can make that uh, part of the study. Psalm 32, verse 8. Yeah, I will guide thee with mine eye. And the, as long as the eye, though, is the light of the body, right? Yeah, mine eye, the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. Uh, because we also read that if the eye is full of darkness, if the eye is evil, then the whole body is going to be full of darkness. So there I think, uh, you know, we can see that there's a tie in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, amen. Guide you into all truth. Very good. Excellent uh, verses. All right, let's take a look at the needle. Who do you suppose is in view there? And the needle, needlework, embroiderer, curiously wrought, diverse colors. There's a clue. And there again, is that surprising? We would be looking at, at Christ, right? So Mark chapter 10, verse 25 again. Just posting this verse because that's the target verse for the lesson, just as a reminder. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Can you see how the eye of a needle there is Christ? Can you see that? If the eye is Christ, the needle is Christ. Isn't that interesting? So it is easier for a camel to go through Christ. He is the eye. Let me share some verses here on the needle. Uh, Exodus 26, verse 36. Thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen, wrought with needlework needlework and then uh, is that judges yeah, I think it's judges would you have they not sped have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two to Sisera yeah amen Eric very good um, a prey of diverse colors that's Christ again it is the garment of Christ uh, of needlework you see that of diverse colors of needlework on both sides meet for the necks of them that take the spoil okay so very interesting we see needlework uh, diverse colors we also read for example in uh, Ezekiel 16 verse 16 and thy garment and of thy garments thou didst take Deckest thy high places with diverse colors. Now, who's, who do you suppose is in view here in this context? 
looking at the language. It is speaking of judgment, right? Playing the harlot. Thou uh, deckest thy high places with diverse colors. That's Antichrist, isn't it? It is Christ, but it is in a day of judgment it becomes Satan. It becomes Babylon. They, yeah, exactly. They come in the name of Christ. Very interesting. Um, Psalm 45, verse 14. They look like Christ. Yes, amen. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. They call themselves Christ. They call themselves Christians. And that's the scary part, right? It, like today in, in judgment, uh, that's why, again, I propose it is very important because many people are quoting the Bible. We see it in the church. We see it on Facebook. We see it everywhere we turn. And again, that's why I'm, I, you know, I, I hesitate to speak of the churches. You know how some people, every time they say or they, they, they bring up uh, Babylon, they make reference to the churches. And if you ask them, they literally believe that that's talking about the, the, the walls of the building where the people congregate. And, and that's the, the, the idea there. And that's, again, I don't see the Bible to be teaching that because that church, uh, that location, it was typifying the, uh, the invisible church. Uh, even the invisible church, that was the corporate body. So we can't. I don't think we can put any substance in uh, anything tangible or literal. Again, that's how the doctrine of uh, coming out of Babylon had to do with leaving the corporate churches, leaving the, uh, the building, in other words, not being a part of it. Well, how is that spiritual? Because that's something that you can exercise uh, authority over. So there can't be any, uh, any substance there as far as I can see. So then we read that the virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. That was Psalm 45, verse 14, right? Uh, Genesis 37. Looking at the many colors, the needle, the needlework, how it appears to be a reference to Christ. And verse 3, Genesis 37. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. He made him a coat of many colors. What do you suppose is in view with the language that he was a son of his old age? Just in passing. And why this would be a reference to Christ. I think the old age is pointing to the end, isn't it? A time when Christ is revealed. A time when the body has reached maturity, right? And the woman brings forth. So it is a son of his old age. And then uh, one last verse in this category. Genesis 37, verse 33. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his, was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. And this would be what? They stripped him out of his coat of many colors. So they removed his garment, his covering. That's a type of the church killing the church, killing the body of Christ. The two witnesses, when they shall have finished their testimony, yeah, exactly, Eric, amen. They remove Christ because that's what the coat of many colors, I believe, uh, is pointing to. They are killed, yes. So they removed, they stripped him of his garment, his coat of many colors. They took away his strength, which is also Christ. And that would be the language of the church and tribulation. The time when the, uh, the two witnesses were killed. Evil now becomes good, good becomes evil. Antichrist began to rule. Okay. Alright, now one last section. And hopefully this might tie together the, uh, the language or the verses that we've been looking at. We're looking at the broad versus a narrow way. And the way, again, I believe is pointing to Christ. The broad way and there is a narrow way. 
Mark chapter 10, verse 25. I'll post the, uh, the target verse one last time. It is easier for a camel to go through Christ, to go through the eye of a needle, to become saved, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And the rich man typifying Babylon. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye at the straight gate. You see how the, uh, the connection is there? Enter ye at the straight gate. And who is the gate? Well, depending on the context, it could be Christ. Or it can be Antichrist. Right? Enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. Yeah. Wide is the gate, that, and broad is the way, that is Christ, that leadeth to destruction. A man has his own way. And that reminds me, remember that, uh, was it the Psalm of Proverbs? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Remember that verse? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that way there, it is Babylon. A time when they, uh, they they go about their own uh, establishing their own righteousness. The end, yeah, the end is death. The end is Babylon. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter seven verse fourteen. Because straight is the gate and narrow the way that leadeth unto life, and that's the eye of a needle. Because the gate there, the way that's Christ, and the context of salvation. So straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Remember, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That's a narrow way, right? It is Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Luke chapter 16, verse 17. Uh, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass. There God, again, I believe is saying the same thing, except from a different perspective. It is easier for uh, heaven and earth, that's the church, corporate body, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away, than one title of the law to fail. And I, again, I think this is language uh, pointing to the redemption of, of the church, of the body. Uh, two more verses, Matthew 19, verse 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. So there it is. Uh, it's impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. With God, a camel is able to go through the eye of a needle. That is, become saved. Right? The elect. And with Christ, it is possible to go through the narrow gate. And then finally, Mark chapter 10, verse 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but again, and saith unto them, Children, how hard, Jesus answered again, saith unto them, How hard it is for them that trust in riches. Babylon, right? The rich man, they're, they're trusting in their own wisdom, their own righteousness, their own riches their own gospel to enter into the kingdom of God okay all right very short conclusion and we can open for a uh, discussion and I post the whole thing all right so God appears to be associating eye of a needle with a narrow path at least to Christ so it is Christ. Now that uh, you know, we look at the uh, the individual components, and we see that that's just another way God is uh, giving us a picture of of the Savior of Christ. A camel type of the elect that is unclean at first, though impossible, is able to go through this narrow way because all things are possible with God. However, another spiritual picture is that. It's impossible for Babylon, that's the rich man, to enter into heaven once God shuts the door on, 
on her. Right? Okay, uh, hang on one second. 